Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. You're here for another episode of Form Check Friday. First things first, a couple things I want to mention. Number one, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but we put together what I think was probably our best sumo deadlift tutorial to date. The goal was to make it the best on the internet. Let us know what you guys think. Head over to Omar Isif's channel, check it out. It's a bit lengthy, but it's very, very in depth. A lot of you guys who are sending in these sumo deadlift videos to Form Check Friday you should go check that out. A lot of what I talk about here and a lot of the cues that I give are in that video and I expand upon them in that video. So go check that out. We're pretty happy with how it came out, with how it turned out rather. The other thing I wanted to mention is today's Friday. Tomorrow we're launching some brand new Calgary Barbell apparel. We're gonna have these camo hats for sale and we're gonna have our signature equipped bruised tired shirt launching. We're really, really stoked on that one. I think it is hilarious. Um, that's about it for that. Let's get down to the form checks. Our first video today comes from Eric Mills. Now Eric Mills sent in, I think 12 videos. I apologize, we're not gonna get to all of them today. Uh, we did take a look at your sumo deadlift. We got a 500 triple here and a 495 single or so. Um, the 500 triple is what we're looking at here. And the biggest thing is there's just a lack of extension in the back, a lack of setup, and uh, kind of a lack of pulling yourself into position. So it's not that you're losing the position, it's that you're failing to achieve the position. Um, so my recommendation would be to do some cat cow exercises, try doing some beltless stuff, because sometimes a belt can interfere with how well you can feel your back. Uh, in terms of whether it's extended or in a little bit of flexion or neutral. Um, so try some beltless stuff, lighten the weight, take your time, and like I said, some cat-cow stuff can really help with gaining the awareness of uh, sort of how your spine's oriented in these positions. As well as take a little bit more time in your setup, make sure you're pulling into a consistent position each time. And once you can achieve that position, work on maintaining it throughout every rep. You'll see here in the, I think it was 495 single, uh, pretty similar thing happens. We got a straight on side angle in this video, so that helps as well. But we can see we're just not getting into uh, a back extended position. And I think we could be getting into a lot more upright position by just extending that back a little bit better. Our next few videos here come from Desmond. Now Desmond submitted once before, and this is his initial squat. He's squatting in flats and he's squatting with a little bit more of a, 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 an aggressive torso angle. So he's a little bit more lean forward. And uh, as the set wears on, we're starting to get a little bit more of his butt kicking back out of the hole. We're starting to see those knees rock back and that weight really shift back out of the bottom of his squat. So what Desmond did was he got into some heeled shoes and started working on the cue of keeping his knees forward over his toes as he initiates the squat. Now you see here, we're not getting any of that rocking back. You can see maybe the technique's still a little bit shaky. We're still kind of learning, figuring things out. But to me, that looks a lot better in terms of maintaining the same torso angle that you're starting with. Uh, so you're better able to anticipate the positions you're gonna be in throughout the lift. So although, the differences may be small. It does look to me like this is a much better squat. So I just wanted to show that and be able to illustrate examples of sort of before and after, and maybe some of the more nuanced stuff that we look for in a lot of these videos. Our next video here comes from Darren. Now, Darren actually followed our eight or nine week program from the So You Want to Be a Powerlifter series, heading into his first powerlifting meet, and uh, he said he was super happy with his result, and this is his 260 kilo deadlift, uh, his third attempt from that meet, and he just smoked it. But he also asked if I could take a look at it and see if there's anything technique-wise that's off about it. So, uh, the first thing we notice is looks like starting in a good position and then losing the position as we initiate the lift. So by locking the lats down harder and focusing a little bit more on keeping the, keeping the lats engaged as a mechanism to keep your back in position, I think you're gonna be able to maintain a bit of a better position off the floor. Um, now, as a bit of an aside here, I know I talk about extended backs and making sure that you're not lifting with a rounded back in your deadlift, et cetera, et cetera. But there are a lot of cases of people lifting with a slightly or quite rounded back 
safely uh, and for long periods of time and getting very strong doing it. Now, that's not the way I coach my athletes, but that's not to say that if you lift with a round back, you're gonna blow yourself apart and everything is wrong with it, et cetera, et cetera. But you guys send your emails in to me for my criticism, and that's the reason I continually criticize people to extend their backs. Uh, sorry, the reason I can continually criticize people to extend their backs is because there is a slight risk inherent with lifting with a rounded back. And more often than not, the highest level lifters, the guys who are able to lift the most weight for the longest period of time, are gonna be those guys with a more efficient technique. So that's why I try to nudge people towards that side of thinking and that side of doing things. But I'm not saying that if your back is rounded and your deadlift is garbage. Uh, as we can see here, Darren's pulling 260 kilos like a toy. So it clearly works for him. I wouldn't necessarily say that Darren needs to get to the place, uh, to, to the point rather, where his back is perfectly extended. What I would say is get into a solid rounded position where your lats are engaged and your back is tight and strong enough to maintain that same degree of flexion throughout the whole lift. So we're not seeing you start a little bit rounded and then get really rounded before the bar comes off the floor. Rather, we're starting a little bit rounded, staying a little bit rounded, and then extending as we just, just as we finish the lift. So there's an in-depth look at my opinion on flex, flex back deadlifts versus extended back deadlifts. So our next video here comes from Mike. Now, Mike is relatively new to strength training. He says he's been working on strength specifically for I think a couple months now. And here is Mike doing a squat. Now, a lot of the things here look pretty good. I think with your upper back position, we could probably get a little bit tighter. Not necessarily moving the grip in, because it looks like maybe we got some shoulder issues uh, in terms of flexibility and stability in the shoulder joint. So I think if we leave the grip where it is, but we work on pulling those shoulder blades together a little bit harder and trying to get those shoulder blades pulled flat on your back. It looks like we're a little bit sort of rotated forward in the shoulders. If we can get those shoulder blades pulled down flat on your rib cage and pulled towards each other in the back, we're gonna be able to create a little bit more tightness there, which is gonna help with my main criticism here. And that is if you watch as Mike hits the very bottom of the squat, he tips forward just a little bit and loses some tightness and uh, positioning in the bottom of his squat. So the biggest thing I would say is if we can get that trunk and that torso tighter, specifically by using those cues that I mentioned for your shoulder blades, that's gonna go a long ways. Um, we're gonna be able to get a little bit more comfortable and consistent with that bottom position, which is gonna result in less loss of positioning, which is gonna result in a better squat. So that's the, the biggest thing I would work on there is shoulder blade positioning and making sure that we're staying nice and tight at the bottom. Now, one thing that you also might wanna do, Mike, if you're relatively new to strength training, is look at doing something like a pause squat on uh, maybe if you have like an accessory squat movement or a slot for that kind of movement, doing some pause squats where you pause uh, not loose, but very tight. I wanna make that distinction. So if you come down to the bottom and you just kind of flop into the bottom and then try to rebuild all your tightness, we're kind of not getting uh, what we want out of the pause squat. But if you can go down, sit into the bottom, maintaining tension and make it an isometric contraction, which means we're still contracting everything, but the joint angle isn't changing. You're sitting into the bottom, holding very, very tight in the bottom, and then coming up out of that position, you're gonna be able to become stronger and more comfortable in that bottom position and ideally lose less tightness. So there's a couple ways we can address that. One through some cues and another through some assistance exercises. Next up, we have a couple of deadlifts and a squat from my man, Nick. Now, the biggest thing that I noticed with Nick, this is his first deadlift. This one's a little bit lighter than the other one, but you'll notice just as he goes to pull, there's a slight little bit of uh, his butt kicking back and his knees extending without maintaining his hip angle. So um, we'll see that get a little bit more exaggerated in this video, which is a second deadlift video he submitted a little bit heavier, and that fault is a little bit more pronounced. So the biggest thing that I would recommend for you, Nick, is I would recommend trying to be a little bit more patient off the floor and try and really get that feeling of 
pushing the deadlift to start it. Try and use those quads. Make sure that you're maintaining your hip angle as you initiate the deadlift, not allowing your butt to come up behind you. So a lot of times slowing things down off the floor a little bit and uh, making sure that you're staying upright. Um, I've heard people say lead with the chest, but I'm not sure I am super into that cue because I don't, wanna, I don't want you to end up overextended and breaking all that good bracing that we talk about all the time. Um, so I would say slow it down, be a little bit more patient off the floor and try to find that push feeling to initiate your deadlifts. Um, Sticking with the theme of maybe suggesting an accessory and assistance exercise, uh, because I really like your positioning, I don't think we need to change anything there, but I would say maybe some pause deadlifts where you're pausing just barely off the floor and uh, essentially forcing yourself to start the movement twice. Because we're pausing so close to the floor, it's gonna be almost like breaking the floor twice if you're doing it properly. So that's gonna give you extra practice and extra work in, that, in those specific joint angles and uh, in those specific muscles that help keep you in position and make things uh, move well off the floor. So that's what I would say about your deadlift. Uh, the squat here, this is gonna be pretty easy. Not a lot wrong with it. The mechanics of it look really, really good, but you kinda do this weird twerk thing before you start the lift. I would try and get a little bit more consistent and uh, try and not waste energy making unnecessary movements as you initiate the lift. You kinda like rock your hips back and forth and then start. I would say if you can just go from nice, solid standing position and just kind of gradually initiate your squat instead of kind of doing this thing before you initiate your squat, we're gonna get a little bit more consistent, we're gonna waste a little bit less energy and uh, probably gonna reduce the risk of, of tweaking something or, or you know, even something minor like, like popping a rib or something on, uh, on a heavy squat. Because a lot of times those little adjustments and bracing before you initiate the squat with heavier loads can cause little things to kind of just go wrong. All right guys, that's it for this week. Thanks to everybody for submitting. Uh, we're up to about September 11th right now with our submissions uh, in terms of how backlogged we are. We do make sure to get through and get back to everybody, even if you just get a quick email from me saying, hey dude, looks good, keep doing what you're doing. Or you get featured on the channel or I give you some more uh, sort of general advice through an email. If you submitted before September 11th, you haven't heard back from me, make sure to let us know. DM me on Instagram, send the business of Facebook uh, to our Calgary Barbell Facebook Messenger thing. Let us know that we missed you. Uh, a couple other notes. Number one, we are getting back to a consistent upload schedule. We're getting back to doing some training logs. We've started training for the Nash and Arnold's. Uh, video series, so it's gonna be Raw Nationals and Equipped Arnold's, it's gonna be a couple of training blocks involved there, but we're gonna take you guys along uh, as I prepare for those, and we'll be getting back to more videos more often. Uh, we might even be doing a small series on tattoos, so I might talk a little bit about some of my tattoos and stuff, because uh, I know we've had a lot of people ask, so. Anyways, that's enough jabbering. Stay tuned, we got lots more coming at you. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for the submissions, and we'll see you guys next week.